This is a gentleman that's sitting with me. His name is Bryce. Bryce is a good guy. He's not like some of the other ones. We've or other one. Well, we've had a few, but we've had some good guys on here. We've had one turd. It's it's all good though. Uh, I'm gonna start something new. Okay, so if you guys are a veteran watching this, you guys have stories. It doesn't have to be in the in the Ukrainian war. It could be literally Iraq, Afghanistan. It'd be really cool if I have some guys from World War II, but there's not a lot of those left. That'd be pretty. F- it could be crazy wild. But if you guys want to come on and please. Um, Tell your story. I want to start doing this. I used to do this back in the day, like six, seven years ago. Please send me an email. Veterans Truth Pod at gmail.com. I'm just going to put it right here on screen. Go ahead and do it. Send me over an email. Please, um, uh, depending on who you are and what you've done and what year it is, I'm probably going to ask you for a little bit more uh, credentials, essentially. I'm going to want to see. It doesn't have to be your DD214, possibly, depending on who it is. I want to see some real stuff. I want to hear some real stories where you've been. Because uh, I think some like getting a lot of stuff out there, it kind of gives uh, people... I, not like myself, because I, I have I have a little bit of experience in it, but I'm saying like people that are sitting at home that don't have the um, knowledge of what it really feels like to to be in that kind of a situation. I want to hear them the firsthand experiences of the guys like this one who's sitting next to me. I guess it was a, a, about a, a week and a half actually later from from this night to to the night where where I got injured. For about four days, we were doing training. Um, at this time, I was kind of like. The, the team leader, the um, training sergeant, like like all this stuff for, for, for our team and uh, the Ukrainians that we worked with. And uh, I think it was like the second day that we were, we were training, you know, basically basic, basic movement skills, you know, moving to contact from contact, you know, uh, shoot and move drills, just basic, basic stuff. And I think it was like the second day that we were doing that two other Ukrainian units joined in with us. So now I'm teaching all these guys how to move with each other and everything like that. And I don't know what we're training for. I just know we're doing, this is the training that the commanders want done. So this is, this is what we're doing. And we do that for a couple of days. I think we trained for roughly four or five days. Well, the fifth day I find out what we're training for and it's to assault the trench that we tried to do that, that night. Uh, a week and a half, week, week and a half prior. So I was like, okay, well, before we were training, like everyone get on a big line and kind of like walk to. So, but now I know that what we're doing, I was like, no, we can't do that. So I modify how we, how we're going to be assaulting this position. Um, basically, instead of having, you know, seven or eight guys in one line, we're going to do, you know, two groups of four and kind of just like come in between each other. Cause there's a very small walkway on the, on the side of that, uh, on the side of that tree line. We don't want everybody out in this field because there's Russian positions over here, Russian positions over here. We want to try to stay as close to this tree line as possible. So we do some training. Everything's good. We get, uh, we find out that we're actually assaulting multiple trenches that day. And then our trench that were is the is the first one like that is the stepping stone to all the to all the other trenches um, that they're that we're gonna assault that day. So like we have to we have to take our trench. So we do all of our training. Everything everything is good. Every everybody's feeling feeling confident. Everybody's good. The next day around midnight, give or take, we load up. We go to one of our staging points. Get a little extra gear. Some other stuff. We go to another staging point, get ready to move, and then we move into probably roughly around like, I don't know, zero four, zero five. We we move into the trench that we're going to step off from, which is 170 meters from the Russians. But we're just waiting for um, sunrise. When sunrise happens, we're going to have two, fi- two Humvees with 50s, Pull up next to pull up next to our position. Lay down suppressive fire. We're supposed and before that, we're supposed to have a tank shoot at that Russian position uh, with a few shots, and then the and then the fifties come in, and then we come in. Um, so sunrise is starting to happen. We hear the tank boom starts starts lighting up. We're like, all right, cool, get ready. We're getting ready to move. And then uh, the fifties move in. The fifties start lighting up, and we get ready to step out of the trench. And again, we've been training for this one Georgian guy. He was supposed to take point. So I step out of the trench and I look at him and I'm like, Devai. He's like, he's like no, 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 Devai, 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 Devai. I'm like, I, look at, I looked at Rusty and I, said, I even said it. It's, it's, it's not on my video uh, that I have on 
that I've, I've shared because uh, like there you can see our position and everything like that. So I cropped all that out. But even even then I was like, well, I guess I'm going again or I guess I'm going first again. Drew, drew the short stick twice, um, which was fine, I guess. Um, but uh, so then we start we start moving down. And the 50s are still laying down some some good suppressive fire. So we're just trying to move quickly, but if uh, um, effectively down down this down this tree line um and uh are qu quickly and tactfully i guess the, the better word and uh we get roughly again 40 40 ish meters 50 meters or whatever and uh we start engaging them to as, as we close in the rest of the the rest of it so as we're doing that i forgot to undo my my dump pouch so I go through my magazine, I go to, go to, to, to drop it in my dump pouch. And I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh. so I drop to a knee and everyone else is supposed to, you know, the, uh, uh, I see, I see one guy drop to his knee on my side. So I, I see my guys, they, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do, but nobody is assaulting through us. Like we'd been training. So I'm sitting here trying to dig through my, undo my dump pouch. that didn't want to, uh, uh, undo, I'm telling the guys, I'm like, divide, 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 like, go, oh, go, go. They're not going. They just, everyone just stopped and took a knee right there, except for one guy. Like, he he just keeps pushing on. So, like, I keep yelling at them, like, trying to go. They don't go. Finally get my dump pouch open and uh, change my magazine out, start moving again. Um, make it down a, a little a little ways, and then I don't remember why, why, why we stopped the second time. We stopped another time for a brief second. I don't remember why. I really don't. I think maybe it was another magazine change or, or something like that. I don't remember. Um, but again, the guys weren't assaulting through us like they were like they were supposed to do, except for the one guy like way out by himself. And I'm like, Sh like I'm trying to change my magazine out quick so we can go support him. We get up to the position, and as I'm walking up to the position, I see like two Russians like dive into like the trench, like like they were standing like here, but then I see him like dive into like a little bunker area. So that's when I called out for the first grenade, threw, threw the grenade in there, and uh, it goes off. And in my head, I'm like, we need to jump in this trench as quick as possible. But we've also been told a lot of stories and rumors that they booby wire or they booby trap their trenches for if there's an assault. So I'm sitting here trying to scan everything and also make sure that there's grenades and, and rounds going downrange where I just saw the two Russians. That way they don't, because we're all just grouped up right there on the edge of the trench. Like a, like a perfect shooting gallery for if they were to, if they were to pop out, like perfect shooting gallery for them. So I'm trying to suppress them, but also scan and check everything all at the same time. Finally, I think after like two or two or three grenades, um, I assessed that this immediate area that I was at was good for me to jump into. So I jumped into it and I know there's a, there's a small hole to the left, like right at the end of the trench. And at the time it looked like it was perfect size for like a body to fit into. Um, so I was thinking that, you know, maybe there was a Russian in there. So as soon as I jumped in there, I just, I just dropped one round to like shoot it to the back of that little hole. Um, and uh, I looked in there and, and there was, there was nobody in there. So I was like, all right, good. So then I walked, I'm walking this trench trench line and I can see that it, it shoots off this way a little bit. So I'm wa walking down, walking down and Russian trenches are disgusting. They're just They like Ukrainian trenches. Like they, they smell to a degree just cause I mean, you have men living in dirt. Right. Um, but like their trenches, like it's a different type of smell. Like it's almost as if like they're, they're like shitting and pissing like wherever, like not a designated area to, you know, go to the bathroom, but like, wherever and they have like trash i mean trash everywhere but um so i'm walking so i'm walking down and i see this little this little area where they're at and it's covered by a, this big black um kind of looks like a sleeping bag it's kind of what it looked like or a big blanket or kind of kind of like one of those things almost a moving like a moving carpet um moving blanket you know i i engage in that little area you know pop a few rounds just in case if somebody's standing there or whatever, just on the other side of that curtain. And then, um, my, my buddy Rusty, he, he comes around the back side and, uh, to, to come around the other side of the trench and he yells out that there's, 
there's a hole over here. So tell him to, you know, to, to, to stop. I, gra- I, I, I called for a grenade, grabbed one, prepped it, threw it over in that little area that he was trying to get into. It went off. They, they start moving up, and eventually they, they jump down into that trench area. So now we're, he and I are like right just like this and then angled in right here because my trench where it was, it, it didn't just go straight like this. It, it, comes, it comes in, and then it turns in like this to where like their little bunker is, but then it like shoots off to the right. So it's not just a straight line. So we're so I guess we're kind of like this off off canted a little bit, but both facing towards the the little bunker area. At this point, like there's a a little the 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 tarp had moved over a little bit to where like there was probably yay room for me to just lob grenades to the back of the to the back of the trench. So I'm sitting there just chunking a few grenades, chunking a few grenades. He tells me, Rusty tells me, he's like, hey, there's there's a shooting port right here. Uh, I was like, I was like, all right, hold off, because like I'm not wanting, I don't want him to get in front of it to drop a grenade or anything like that, because that exposes the living mess out of him. So if we can get these guys to surrender this way, makes more sense than exposing him. So I'm I'm telling uh, the Ukrainian that was right behind me, who was also our medic, he spoke 50-50 English, um, very broken. Um, I'm like, tell them to surrender. And he's like, what? I was like, tell them to surrender. Tell them to come out, surrender. Like, let's go. So he yells out for him a few times. Um, also, if you, if you ever hear the the word uh, pit, oh man, I'm gonna butcher it. Pit, pitity, pitity. But basically, basically it means uh, faggot. Like they don't they don't call Russians Russians. They call them faggots. So even even when he's calling out to them like surrender, he's like he's like, hey faggots, like come out. Um, so he's he yells at them to surrender. They don't, so I I, I lob a, a couple more grenades in there. And at this point, I'm like I'm like man, well, I've thrown a lot of grenades in there. Maybe like maybe they're all dead, like maybe they're all dead in there. And then, uh, I'm like I don't know, so I tell him like hey, tell them to surrender again, because the last thing I want to do is to send anybody down this dark little bunker area that we can't see down, and have s- some Russians in there just waiting for us to to, to walk down that little fatal funnel. So he calls out for them to surrender again. They don't. So I think I lobbed like two more grenades in there. And Rusty was like, he was like, hey, I can drop a grenade down this firing port. And I was like, let me do this one one more time, and then we'll go, then we'll go that route. So that's when I threw my grenade. It blows up, and I poke my head back in just to assess the situation and uh um see you know see if that that blanket had moved anymore or or, or anything kind of just you know just assess and um that's when i just see this at face face level right there at the door the or just past towards me just past the door um this big old light and dirt and debris and everything like that hit me in my face and at first i was like did i just walk into my own grenade like, that's literally what I thought. I was, I was like, I just walked into my own grenade. And then I was like, no, my grenade, my grenade went off. I watched it go off. And then I took a step. And then I saw that. So then I like, I look, I look down at myself and I see blood coming from my left shoulder and I look at it and I was like, okay, it's just a little bit of blood. It's not, you know, femoral. There's no, there's not a crazy amount of blood or anything like that. And, um, the first thing, the next thing that came to my mind was, uh, they're trying to assault out of their bunker like they just launched a grenade at me and they're they're about to they're about to come out so I immediately just poke back in and I start I start shooting and then all of a sudden my eye like from the top all the way down just like started like trickling blood like the best way I describe it and the way like it it came to my mind like at the at the time was uh like 007 you know like blood Mm -hmm. But um, that's literally literally what it was like. And then all of a sudden, it was like looking through a bag of blood. Like if you were to like hold like a big bag of blood like up to the sunlight, that's what it was like. It wasn't black. I could I could see red. Um, it was just like I was looking through blood. Um, my left eye was still good. Um, I I realized that they're they're not assaulting out or anything like that. And with not having an eye, I was like I was like I'm I'm no longer combat effective. Uh, I need to, I need to back out. So I yell at Rusty. I was like, I was like, Hey, I'm hit. I got to back out. So I back out, get out of the trench and I start walking down, uh, 
to where we to where we started off from. And at this time, like I thought my GoPro was still working. So as I'm walking, you know, the 170 meters back, um, I'm sitting there like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I got my finger, I, my fingers are good, my hands are good, you know, doing this. I'm walking, I'm like, I can talk, I can think, I can breathe fine. I was like, I taste a little bit of blood, so I spat, and I was like, there's not a lot of blood, so maybe one of my teeth are, you know, slightly cracked or, you know, moved around in my mouth from the blast or whatever. Um, and the whole time, like, I'm just, like, talking to my camera the whole time. Well, come to find out, my camera's blown up, and I'm just talking to myself <laughs> as I walk back. <laughs> um, but, yeah, make it back to our friendly trench, and as I'm walking back, um, I know there's not a medic there, so I just so I'm just yelling, you know, American, American. Um, that way they don't start shooting, thinking it's a Russian, like storming their position or something. And they look at me, and uh, I look like you know the the picture I sent you, like all dirt all over my face with blood coming down of it, and like they they looked like they just saw a ghost. Like that's what that's what the, their facial uh, expressions were. So they tell me to sit down. Uh, uh, and they don't speak any English, so I'm speaking to them in broken Ukrainian. And uh, uh, I start reaching for for my eye fac to to grab just a uh, you know just some type of compression bandage to to throw over my eye because I, I can't see my eye. I don't know how bad it is. I don't I don't know how much blood is coming out or anything. Um, but one of the Ukrainians he actually ends up doing it for me. And I'm talking to them. I'm like, hey, like I need I need a medevac. Like, where's a medic? Like, I need a medevac. And they're like, they're like, no, you stay here. And I was like, I'm not, no, like, I'm not staying here. Like, I can't do anything right here. Like, I need to, I need to go. And they're like, no, you stay here. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, again, I'm not staying here. So I ended up grabbing my rifle um, and walking back the, uh, the kilometer from where our original, like, staging step off point was, um, like, way in the rear. And like, I think, like, another like 800 meters behind that was like a little medical tent or whatever. So I walk all the way back, passing two more Ukrainian trenches, big old bandage on my face, get there. And that's where, uh, my guys were, uh, all Ukrainians, but they were there, uh, with the Humvees and, uh, they see me and like, they start freaking out that I just got, I just got injured. Uh, they throw me into a Humvee and hauled ass to, somewhere I, I don't know at this point like I was getting a little dizzy and just kind of like keep my eyes closed because like the more I looked around the scenery like my stomach was like getting queasy and stuff like that so I uh uh we get somewhere and then they load me into another tr another Humvee and that Humvee took me all the way to the hospital where uh they uh uh stitched up my face right here um I think there's still metal in there like I can like it's hard like it's not just like scarred like always has been hard so i think there's a piece of metal there but they 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 sewed that up right on the spot um they pulled shrapnel out of this big hole right here um what did they do i think they took x-rays of me while i was there too and i saw that i had two pieces of shrapnel in my shoulder and i had some shrapnel in my chin and like a couple other small pieces in my arm or whatever but uh, I was probably there for maybe an hour while they were doing that. And then they threw me into an ambulance with some other Ukrainian. And we went to uh, uh, the hospital in Dnipro, which is like three hours away. And as soon as I got there, they immediately did surgery on my eye uh, to fix something. And then like the next day, they did another surgery and pulled out. They pulled out a piece of shrapnel. I don't have the shrapnel that they pulled from my eye. They wouldn't give it to me. She goes, I was, I was like, can I have this? And she was like, no, you can take a picture. I was like, you take a picture. This is mine. But uh, there was a piece of shrapnel in my eye. Like, this is all shrapnel from my from my body. Um, there was a piece of shrapnel from my eye like that size. Like, buried in my... Yeah. It's a big, big piece of metal to be in your eye. Like, it's a small piece, but to be in your eye. This one, that big guy, was in my shoulder. Hmm. It's probably not too healthy. No, that's why I decided to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, it uh they 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 pulled it out. But then um so I, I was in Dnipro for a couple weeks. Um and the whole time, like like in my lip, I was like, I was like, man, this hurts. I was like, maybe my lip is cut or something like that. And uh look in the mirror one day, I like flip my lip up and I see like this black sliver, a piece of shrapnel like in my lip. So I pull I pulled that out. 
um, which one was it? I think this this little scar right here, there. Um, I think it was right there. I don't know one of these, or maybe that one. It was that one. That one for sure. Um, I was laying in my rack one night, and uh, I rolled over, and I felt the blankets like snag my arm, and I thought it snagged the bandage from like from from this other shrapnel hole. So like I I put my hand on it to like smooth the bandage back out, and I felt like what then I thought was like a scab like peeling. I was, I was like, ow, that hurts. Like every time I touched it, like it hurt. So I look at it and like I got a flashlight and I'm looking at it and I see like this silver shine to it. I'm like, oh, that's a piece of metal. So I pull this piece of metal out of my arm and uh, actually the last piece of strap I pulled out of my, my body was like a week and a half ago and it was in my chin. It was like pushing out of my chin. And at first I thought it was just, a, again, a scab that hadn't healed. But it turns out it was, a, it was a piece of shrapnel, so I grabbed some uh, uh, fingernail clippers and I, like clipped onto the piece of metal, and I just like ripped it out of my chin. So now I have like this perfect little little bald spot. Oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was that. That was me getting getting blown up. Um, I ended up uh, uh, I was working with an NGO to try to get some um, equipment for our unit, some like MBGs and stuff like that. And like, they, they knew some people or they to, to, to get us equipment. But while I was in Dnipro, um, the like one of the directors like hit me up and was like, Hey, we want to take care of you. Like, we want to get you back to America. Like we want to get you an eye doctor. Like we want to do all this stuff. So, uh, uh, blue and yellow Ukraine, blue and yellow Ukraine USA or blue and yellow for Ukraine USA is the NGO phenomenal people. Like they, we actually, we got a drone from them. Um, our unit got a drone for them. So like they're, they're, they're giving supplies to units. Like they, they helped me, they bought my plane ticket back to the States. They flew me to Chicago. They got me with, uh, an eye doctor there. Um, all pro bono. Um, he did like a little laser, a little laser thing on my eye, um, for free. And, um, like if, if it needs surgery later on, cause like right now he said, it's like still really early in the healing process to know like what, what everything's going to need and stuff like that. But anything and everything that, uh, um, needs to be done with my eye, uh, this NGO and him are, are taking care of everything for me. Um, so phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal organization, uh, helped me out a lot more than I was expecting to get helped because like when we were dealing with geo, um, like we called the embassy, you know, like we were trying to get evacuated and stuff like that. And like, we were getting like no help at all. So that's kind of how I thought it was going to be with me, which is fine. Like I kind of knew that from the get go, like going over there, I was like, the U S isn't involved at all. Like nobody here in the States really cares what's going on over there anymore. Like the likelihood of me getting medical help zero. Be, be pretty zero, mm -hmm. pretty much zero. And the fact that they, they, they stepped up and like, they took care of everything. It was like, and they, and they flew me back from Chicago back to Dallas. Um, like they've taken care of everything since, since I got injured. So phenomenal, phenomenal organization. Couldn't, couldn't speak, um, better things about them than, than that. They're just, Good. they're amazing. Amazing. But yeah. Now what are you going to do? Man, that's the million dollar question. That's the million dollar question. Um, I don't know. Right now I got to kind of, um, I'm thinking about going back to school or well, back to school. Yeah. Um, I really want to do since being over there, like I really liked doing medicine and everything and helping people out. So I think I'm going to do, uh, go to, uh, go to school, be a, a nurse and go work at a pediatric trauma hospital go work on little kids. Um, okay. help them out. But that's the, that's the game plan. I don't know. I got a, I got a lot of other things to figure out before that, but you know, that's, that's the, the long term game plan, you know, I got a, uh, I sold everything to go to Ukraine. I sold my truck, my motorcycle. Um, I sold everything. So now I gotta, I gotta figure out how to, how to do all that stuff again, get a, get a job, get a, get all that fun stuff and then, uh, go to school, go work at a, go work at a hospital <laughs> with, like a, with a, with a one eye. With one eye. With one eye. Unless you can use your GI Bill for that, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm a, I'm gonna use my, my GI Bill for school and then, um, it, whatever that doesn't cover, Yellow Ribbon Act covers a lot of other stuff, and then also uh, the Hazelwood Act. So all my you ain't got nothing to worry about. No, nah, no. School wise, I don't got nothing to worry about. It's just all the the other life bills, you know, house, car. It's overrated. Don't worry about it, buddy. Oh, well, hey, it's perfect. overrated. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have to stay and pay for it anymore. Well, I'm glad you came on. Yeah, man. Appreciate and it. I got thanks to meet for, you. Yeah, man. Thanks oh, for, thanks it was for good. Me. Thanks for having me. I had to listen, literally listen to you talk for like an hour and a half. I didn't very say very much. Usually, I'm a talker. Yeah, that's, I'll let you do your thing. Just yeah. get after it. Yeah. Put put me and Willie in a room together. Uh, well, <laughs> Willie could talk to him. Well. Man, I've I've seen I've seen that I've seen a can, lot of his videos. He'll, yeah, he'll be back here in a week and a half and he will literally 
He can have a conversation with that door over there. Yeah. Yo, Willie, that's the door. He says, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, all right, Willie, keep going. <laughs> Do your thing, man. <laughs> keep talking, Willie. It's fine. It's all good. Well, I appreciate yeah. you coming on, buddy. Yeah, man. Absolutely appreciate um, you. Other than that, I do I do appreciate it. All right, guys. See you.